This is the new Steam Deck with an OLED screen, but I have some questions. What's new with this device? How much performance does it have over the previous versions and other handheld consoles? And is it worth the upgrade? One thing I should clear out is that this is not the Steam Deck 2 as Valve still promises for a new generation of the Steam Deck in the future. That device won't see the light of day until there have been enough advancements in mobile processing power. So, you should expect the same gaming performance as the original. That might be a disappointment for gamers, but the experience with the OLED screen will definitely be better in a number of significant ways, as we shall see later in the video. At first glance, the Steam Deck OLED may appear identical to the original Steam Deck. However, beneath the surface, several key improvements make this iteration a compelling upgrade. The star of the show is undoubtedly the vibrant OLED display, offering deeper blacks, richer colors, and a wider viewing angle compared to the LCD panel. This enhancement is particularly evident in games featuring dark environments like Cyberpunk 2077, where the OLED's superior contrast creates an immersive visual experience. The OLED version boasts a 5% weight reduction, tipping the scales at 640 grams compared to the LCD model's 669 grams. This seemingly minor change translates to a noticeable difference in handling, especially for those accustomed to the original deck. The redesigned trackpad now features enhanced haptic feedback, delivering more nuanced and detailed vibrations during gameplay. This subtle upgrade adds to the overall immersion and provides valuable tactile feedback for in-game interactions. The revised thumbsticks sport a new material with a pleasingly grippy texture. This improved grip ensures better control and accuracy, especially during intense gaming sessions. The one terabyte model of the Steam Deck OLED comes bundled with a unique carrying case. This case features a clever design, hiding a second, slimmer case within its core. This innovative approach allows for convenient storage and protection of the device, making it even more travel-friendly. Now hear me out. If you hated the old Steam Deck, this new one probably won't change your mind. I mean, it's still got that chunky charm. But compared to some of these other handhelds, like the Lenovo Legion Go, it's practically a sleek design. But let's talk ergonomics. This thing might be bigger, but it fits in your hands like a dream. I'm talking way more comfortable than that Nintendo Switch OLED, even though it's smaller. It's like a gaming glove, but better. The button layout is exactly the same which means you've still got mappable rear buttons in addition to the, still slightly too high, standard face buttons and triggers. The Steam button remains useful for quickly accessing your game library, the Steam store, your friends list, and advanced settings. It also brings up a list of shortcuts when long pressed. There are also power and volume buttons, a 3.5 millimeter headset jack, and a USB-C port for charging the device. Valve has decided not to equip the DEC OLED with a switch-like kickstand, which without detachable controllers probably wouldn't make a lot of sense anyway. A second USB-C port might have been nice, but it's not a deal-breaker. The major highlight is the OLED screen on the Steam Deck. The LCD panel has been replaced by a 90 Hz HDR OLED screen, which reaches 1,000 nits of brightness, giving you a gorgeous view while playing games like Cyberpunk 2077. But one thing I noticed on the OLED version is that there's this color button that indicates what version you've got, whether you've got OLED or LCD, which is nice. You might not see the difference in the screens between the two Steam Decks, unless you watch this video on an OLED screen, but those who have made the leap from the LCD to the OLED version can testify to that in the comments below. Now, some of you might be wondering about the whole anti-glare versus glossy screen debate. You'll have to purchase the one terabyte model, which has an anti-glare coating, which means no more annoying reflections when you're playing outside. Of course, this does slightly dampen the color vibrancy, but trust me, it's still a million times better than the old LCD screen. The original Steam Deck's display was fine, but a little washed out. But after putting it next to the OLED, I can't go back. The color accuracy is so clearly superior and the images are far more vibrant. When I heard the display featured HDR, I was skeptical of how it would perform, possibly influenced by negative reports of HDR implementation on Windows handhelds. But here, it really just works. Often, HDR in supported games will activate automatically when you boot them. But if not, it's just a case of toggling it on in settings. There's no fading to black or awkward transitions. The effect is more like turning on a light switch. If you're picking up a Steam Deck OLED, you owe it to yourself to jump immediately into an HDR-enabled game. 
such as Marvel's Spider-Man Remastered and The Will of the Wisps. The latter is held up as the gold standard of HDR performance in a game, so it naturally absolutely flies on the deck OLED, rich in color and bursting with light. Unfortunately though, there aren't actually that many HDR games to really make use of the tech. Valve has also upped the deck OLED's refresh rate to 90 Hz, from 60 Hz on the original model. It makes for noticeably smoother general operation and gaming. Granted, the Steam Deck is not powerful enough to run modern AAA games at anything close to 90 FPS, but you can easily get a range of indie games zipping along nicely at the higher frame rate, and you can feel the difference. Valve has also simplified its frame rate cap tool, which is now just one slider in the settings. You just drag it to your preferred frame rate, and the display automatically adjusts to the best refresh rate. While I wish Valve had added VRR support for even smoother visual performance, playing games on this display is a joy. When all the OLED excitement wears off, though, you come to terms with the fact this is still a 1200 by 800 panel in a world where Windows handhelds are proving that higher resolutions are possible. But wait, there's more. Valve didn't just slap an OLED panel onto the existing deck, they went the extra mile, shaving down the bezels to create a truly immersive viewing experience. Now, every inch of the display real estate is dedicated to showcasing your games in all their glory. When it comes to performance, the OLED version should be just a bit faster than the original. As to how this impacts games, you can expect somewhere between 2 and 5 extra frames per second in glossy AAA titles like Cyberpunk 2077 and Marvel's Spider-Man. These games still don't run anywhere close to a consistent 60 FPS, but they can hang steadily in the 30 to 40 FPS range, which is still pretty impressive for a handheld device. It's a small but appreciated difference. A bigger and more appreciable difference is that Valve included a slower, quieter fan. In testing, you won't really encounter any instances where the Steam Deck OLED becomes too loud or too hot. Seeing as how I've heard the opposite about the LCD model, this is a pretty big win that isn't being marketed very much by Valve. Unlike its predecessor, the Steam Deck OLED supports Wi-Fi 6E, which isn't a feature I'm able to make use of on my own home network, but will certainly be welcomed by anyone with the right setup. However, if this is your first handheld gaming PC and you're coming from a Nintendo Switch, you're likely to be blown away by what the deck OLED can do. The fact that I can play Elden Ring on a handheld without making it look like sludge and making some tweaking to get the frame rate anything close to 60 FPS remains remarkable several years on. Locking it at something considerably lower and dialing things back a bit does result in a more consistently smooth ride when you're in open world sections though. You can configure the Steam Deck OLED with 512 GB of storage, which will cost you $550, and the 1 terabyte model will cost you $650. There's also a limited edition 1 terabyte OLED version priced at $680 that comes with a special carrying case, a translucent gray body, and orange accents. One of the downsides of the first Steam Deck was its short battery life which maxed out at eight hours, and that was only under ideal conditions. Valve says the new Steam Deck battery will last you 30 to 50% longer, depending on how you're playing, and it charges faster. The company claims it will go from 20% to 80% in 45 minutes. It has a larger battery OLED tech, meaning you can expect to play for longer before dashing for the nearest plug socket. 30 to 50% longer according to Valve's marketing materials. It's still very easy to burn through a full charge in under three hours, but with a bit of sensible performance management, I'm now more confident about taking the deck on a cross-country train journey. Handheld gaming PCs are still a long way from having anything you could reasonably call good battery life, but by focusing its energy on efficiency with the deck OLED, Valve's device is noticeably improved in that department. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room, the Steam Deck OLED's performance. Before you go thinking this thing is a gaming PC killer, let me clarify, it's not. It's a fantastic handheld with incredible potential, but it's not meant to replace your high-end gaming rig. Don't get me wrong, this device can handle some serious games. You can run titles like Cyberpunk 2077 and Baldur's Gate 3 at playable frame rates. But here's the catch. You'll be sacrificing things like resolution and frame rate stability for portability. For me, a stickler for performance, playing games at 30, 45 FPS just doesn't cut it. 
But maybe you don't care about that as much, or maybe you already have another way to play these games in all their glory. Honestly, I see the Steam Deck OLED as my indie games and older big budget games machine. It excels at these titles, offering a smooth and immersive experience on the go. But if I didn't have another option for AAA games, I wouldn't be happy with the performance on the Steam Deck OLED. Another thing to consider is game compatibility. Not every Steam game is playable on the deck, which is understandable but still a bit disappointing. The good news is that the list of supported games is constantly growing, so hopefully this issue will become less noticeable over time. But here's the bottom line. If you want a true PC gaming experience without sacrifices, you're still better off building a PC. The Steam Deck OLED is a fantastic handheld for specific needs, but it's not a replacement for a powerful desktop setup. Okay, do I think it's worth the upgrade from the LCD version? You know what? I am not recommending the Steam Deck, at least not until you've considered subscribing to the channel. Jokes aside, please do consider hitting the subscribe button as it helps the channel grow and bring you these kinds of videos. So, is the revised Steam Deck the perfect portable gaming machine? Yes. The Steam Deck OLED is a powerful, portable, and stylish gaming machine that's sure to please even the most discerning gamer.